Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Today we are announcing and starting on our next project here on the farm and kind of excited to jump into it. So come along, let's show you what we got. So Cam and I are actually up here behind the house. You can see the house there, our big oak tree in the backyard and of course the garden. And we are going to build what we're calling Chicken Church. So, uh, uh, I'll show you the plans here in a second, but the idea is a fixed coop with a small backyard flock. And so of course to have a small backyard flock, you need to be in the backyard. But there's some method to our madness as to why we're doing this. So if you've watched the channel before, I've actually teased what we're going to do here a little bit. You can see this is our garden down slope and this is a pretty substantial slope. Camera doesn't show it that well, but it's a pretty good grade. And where I'm standing, right here underneath our white oak, of course, this thing produces tons and tons of mast, a lot of good protein in the fall. So having the chicken coop, a fixed coop here, will allow A, Kelly to access it easily for eggs and, and doing those type of things, uh, daily chores. But really the plan is we're going to have, with the fixed coop and the fixed uh, run area, we're going to fill this with wood chips because obviously they'll, they'll just end up cutting it down to nothing to bare dirt. But we're going to keep integrating wood chips and allow them to churn those chips with their manure and move them. Your gravity and them flicking everything should move those chips down the line to our garden drop off. There's actually a cut there that's about four feet that we did uh, last year. So that will produce wood chips and manure and, and turn that into good soil, good compost as it moves on down and then we'll have a collection point down there. So we'll detail that process more because that's obviously going to be something that we work on and, and, and test and, and reevaluate and, and reconfigure based on how it works. Looking at maybe even using some, uh, some boards to make, in my mind, I keep thinking Plinko and the Price is Right, keeping situation there where these boards kind of slow the movement down. We don't want a bunch of runoff just washing everything away. So if we have these boards that are almost like chevrons coming down, then it could possibly slow, slow the uh, movement of that compost and nutrient down. But first and foremost, of course, we have to get our coop built. We want a nice, secure, stationary coop. And since it's in the backyard, it's got to look nice. So let me show you the design. Okay, so the plan, since this is going to be in the backyard, of course, I don't want this to just be some rough cobbled together looking coop. That's something I promised Kelly. Anything in the yard area, we need to try to make look nicer. So I've always wanted to build like a church design. So that's why we call this chicken church. So you can see here by the design, we're going to have an eight by 10 with a wooden floor. And it's going to be a um, double pitch roof. So like a, a, a single gable, I guess, would be the proper term. We'll do metal roof. We'll do rain catchment on both sides that will dump into a rain catchment tank in the back. And of course, you know, a chicken church wouldn't be complete without a steeple. So I'm gonna try to recruit my dad, who's really good at that kind of stuff, to see if he'll build a steeple for me while I work on the main structure. And the little features like a double door in the front, those type of things. And I've actually, somebody gave me two little tiny pieces of stained glass. Actually, my dad gave me two little tiny pieces of stained glass. So we'll put those in the front door to make it look really nice. Now, for those of you worried about, am I being sacrilegious? Well, we're not going to put any iconography. We're not going to put any symbols, uh, no crosses, anything like that. Not going to go that far. Just a simple building that kind of looks like a church. But there are some neat features that I want to point out that this building will offer. And uh, the nesting boxes will be on the left side of the building and it'll be something that can be accessible from outside. So the, the building itself, the coop itself, will make up the corner, the upper one corner of the run. And so the fence will incorporate only two sides. The other two sides, the front door and the uphill side, will not be within the fence. So when Kelly wants to come up and walk into the coop to access something or check on something or lift the a nesting box door to get eggs, she does not have to come through the fence. So that allows us to have easy accessibility on both sides. Now, if you notice here on the back, the way I've got the framing built will be this, this slot, almost like a floor sweep, but it'll be in an area that's about eight to 10 inches tall, and it's almost the entire width of the back. And that'll be a door on the outside that we can raise up 
and then be able to scoop and sweep and do those type of things to clean out the coop. Because being a fixed coop, of course, it's going to collect manure. And we want to push that out into the yard to mix with the wood chips so that it can get moved on down and into our process. So we're going to detail this, obviously, as we go along. This is the focus of our build. But we'll also detail, hopefully, the mechanics of how this run will work to help us produce compost. Okay, so right in front of Cam is where we're going to place that coop, which still has a pretty good slope. Now, it's not as steep. It gets steeper as it goes down toward the garden. But uh, we're going to first level up a spot. And instead of coming in here with a tractor or a piece of equipment and cutting a lot of dirt away and risking damaging the root ball, uh, the root system of the white oak, white oak is really, really sensitive when it comes to its roots. You start jacking around with them, then they die. And I don't want that thing to die. That's, that's my flagship tree here in the in the zone zero of the, around the house. So what we're going to do is just use some cinder blocks and we'll level up four spots. And since we're doing an eight by 10, it, it's not gonna to have to be some super sturdy foundation system, but we're going to just level with some cinder blocks, get that set, and then we can start building our subfloor. Okay, so Cam and I got our four support posts, support pads, oh my goodness, support blocks, all leveled up, ready to go. And you can see, this is this is maybe how it better shows the slope here, since camera doesn't do that very well. Where'd it go? So you can see we are three courses of cinder block on the downhill side versus one. Now granted, we do have the first two recess pretty good so we could have some stability there. And then these are recessed decently well as well. So that's going to give us levels. Yeah, believe it or not, that is level. And uh, so we put our eight by 10 floor on there, then that'll obviously tie it down some more as well. Now, I'm debating going back and forth whether or not to pour concrete down through the webbing of these, uh, these outer blocks, these downhill blocks, just to make it one solid unit. I could even drive some rebar down in the ground and then pour concrete in it and, and maybe help hold it a little bit. I'm not sure, we'll see. Obviously I can always come back and do that before I put the floorboards on and we see how sturdy she's gonna be. All right, so now time to fetch the lumber and start framing the floor out. So the plan is for every bit of wood for this project is going to come from the mill. We're not going to do any sheet goods because I ain't paying that price. And we're just going to see if we can produce everything from the mill. So I already have some true 2x8s milled up to be my subfloor. So Cam and I are going to load that up real quick and get it up there and get that produced. Now I don't have my floorboards milled yet, uh, decking boards if you will, uh, since we're not going to use plywood sheet goods. I still have to mill those up. And then of course it looks like the piglets, they like to get out this time of year when they're this when they're small, they go under the electric fence, they haven't been trained yet. So they got out and knocked my wood pile over. Speak of the devils and the devils appear. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. Hey little jerks. Just passing through, don't mind us. <laughs> don't sneeze in the video. Did 
you not want to ride in the trailer and hold the wood down as we went up the hill? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> you guys don't trust me with trailers, do you? <laughs> for those of you that followed the channel for a while, you know that when the boys were wee lads, I ran them over the hill in a trailer because I didn't latch the receiver or the coupler. And for some reason, they don't like getting in trailers with me anymore. So we cut our first board 10 feet length to uh, put it in place and Camlin noticed on the cutoff, he's like, hey, what made that crazy hole? I'm like, oh, great. That was a carpenter bee that obviously drilled into it while it was ricked up outside to air dry. So he started his little home right there. So he thought, well, let's go look at the board end and see uh, how much damage it did. A little jerk still in there. He's pissed. <laughs> That's crazy. It looks like it looks like if I had drilled a hole for a dowel rod, I couldn't have drilled it any smooth. Perfect circle there. All right, wood's getting lighter. Get a retriever, they said. It'd be fun. Yeah. Jerk dog. So just a, yeah, a triangle or just a straight mark at every two feet. So that outer floor joist that we had, uh, had the one carpenter be in it, we found another daggone hole. So uh, glad we started doing this project before they ate it all. That's on the drying rack. All right, so we got our subfloor in. Everything looks good. We're pretty square. We'll square up even more when I go to put the deck boards on. Now, I don't have the deck boards done yet. I've got to mill those up. And we're gonna put those on green. We're gonna put them on green, butt them up real tight. Probably do a single nail in the center. So when they shrink, it doesn't split it too badly, but it'll shrink to have gaps. And of course that's going to allow manure and those type of things to drop down through, but it shouldn't be too much of a gap where you know, a raccoon or a possum is going to get back in. We don't have to worry about weasels here. So, um, as you can see, we got a pretty high elevation in the face here, and we will probably put some chicken wire across that just to keep the chickens from going up underneath that to, to, to lay an egg. That's, that would be an ideal dark spot for them to, to uh, lay eggs, of course, to make a nest. That's what I'm trying to say, goodness. Uh, and we want them to obviously go inside the building. So we'll, we'll probably wrap that before we let them in here. So as I mentioned earlier, this corner is gonna be the front corner of the run. So the nesting box will be here. So Kelly will be able to come access the nesting box. Now she may have to actually squat down, <laughs> or at least I'll have to squat down to get them since it goes into the ground. And then over here, this is the face, the front of the coop where the, the two doors will be, the entry door. And then the pop door will be here so the chickens can come in and out. And of course, we'll have a, a ramp, <laughs> actually a pretty long ramp. Kelly, it was funny, I was showing Kelly and she suggested maybe a pop door in the floor that comes down so they can go up to the floor, which that would make it a less of a ramp, but then I'd still have to worry about them trying to nest underneath it. And of course, this back area will be the clean out. Now, what we're gonna do for a run, and I'll get into, I'm not gonna detail all this right now. We'll get into it later. But the idea will be to come under 
we've got an awesome, you can see it here, yeah. So this is a huge shag bark hickory. So that puts a ton of mast on the ground, which, you know, chickens aren't cracking hickory nuts straight away, but all the other critters that get into them, uh, the worms and the bugs and all that, the chickens dig that. And then we've got a couple big white oaks here, a huge sugar maple. Obviously it doesn't produce any protein for the chickens, but it's gonna provide great shade. So where I'm standing right here on this corner will be the back corner of the run. So the run will have a post right here and it'll turn and go down underneath the shade tree and fall away right at our little face. So the idea will be when we clean out, we'll be able to clean out, dump manure and stuff here, but I'll be able to back the side by side in with new wood chips on a regular basis. So we'll have a gate here and be able to dump in wood chips and the chickens will just keep just keep raking and moving it down as we put things in there and of course as we put food scraps um, garden scraps those type of things we mix all that in and that's going to encourage the chickens to scrape it down even more especially once they've eliminated all the grass and we just have a wood chip field then that's where they're going to want to move all that down so we'll see like i said we may have to use some boards to make a little bit of a angled terrace to slow down erosion once they get the grass all skinned away. But again, that's where the wood chips help that. So I believe it's time for lunch break. Cam and I are gonna take a break, go grab some lunch, and I probably will not fire up the mill today for the floorboards. We've got a couple other projects we gotta move on to. It's like us, you know, multitasking all the time. But Kelly and I have a couple things inside the house, more domestic stuff that we're working on that really doesn't make the channel. So we'll leave that part out. And comment below what you think. Give us some uh, insight, give us some thoughts. Uh, you know, am I going too far with the chicken church? Do you think the uh, mulch in Hillside should be a good way to generate compost? Comment below, let me know what you think. All right, take care everybody.